Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing my book 2021 recap. In total, I read 22 books this year. Three of them were school related and they were The Tempest, Goddard and Hagseed. So if you put them aside, I read 19 books this year. I'm very proud of how many books I read this year considering I was doing my HSC. If you don't know what HSC is, it's like the final exams you take before you finish high school. And so I'm just so glad it's over. My goal for 2022 is to read 60 books and I have already read two this year. So I'm very excited to reach that goal and just really grateful to have the opportunity to be able to read so much again. But this video is going to be recapping what I read last year. So I'm going to read them in order. I'm going to give you the rating of the book. And if it's really one of my favorite books of 2021, I will give like a one to two sentence synopsis sort of thing. So my first book of the year was Three Wishes by Leanne Moriarty. I gave this book a five star read and I loved it. It follows three sisters and their lives and it's set in Australia. A lot of her books are Australian. I can't talk about all of them. I've only read two of them and the two I've read they were Australian based. They are just so good. I loved following three different storylines. It was very easy to follow for me personally. That being the first book I've read of hers, I was very happy with it and yeah, it's such a good summer read or whenever read and I would just recommend reading that if you enjoy different perspective. The triplets are the kettle triplets and yeah it just follows their different lifestyles and each one of them have different very different lifestyles. The next book I read was 13 by Steve Kavanagh. I want to say I can't find the book but I'll put the cover up here. I loved it. It is a murder mystery but it was just a murder mystery that kept you on your toes. It took you in the courtroom. It's just so many different scenarios and it just went so well together and you I couldn't put it down. I get five stars and I just could not put it down. Um, it's definitely different from the murder mysteries I've read and it was very fast paced. Always new clues coming in, new characters and yeah. It was just really well done overall and I really, really enjoyed the court scenes. Then I read The Flat Chair by Beth O'Leary. Five stars. Five stars. I know some people don't like The Flat Chair, but I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Couldn't put it down. Was so sad that it was finished. Had a book hungover. It's about two people. Strangers to lovers. Their stories, they're totally opposite people. Leon needs money so to help his brother, which you'll find out why in the book. And so Tiffy is looking for a place as well, cheap, so it works out with their schedules um, that one occupies the place at night, the other occupies the place in the day. They never see each other and then all of a sudden things start happening. So yes, very good. Then I read Windfall by Jennifer E. Smith. I gave this book a three star read, wasn't anything spectacular, just very, very typical, very predictable and I just, yeah. After reading that and going to that, that was very disappointing. And I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, five star read. Main character is Evelyn Hugo, it follows her life, each chapter is a different, or each section of the book is about a different husband, it's very well set out, it's so interesting to read her life, even reading the interviewer's life and how Evelyn's life ends up impacting her, it's just yeah, it's very well done, very well put together and if you're looking for something simple, not too hard to read, I would recommend her and I'll also recommend any of our other books which I will show you in a second because I read three of hers this year. Then I read The Tour by Andrew McKee. I gave this book a two star read. I was so disappointed with it. Yeah, it's about two twins who serve under the Queen on a tour ship to Australia and I thought it'd be cool because obviously it's fiction non-fiction because it is based on true events but obviously they're fictional characters but it just is very disappointing. I expected a lot more from it and I wasn't able to get that. When I read Yes, No, Maybe So, I gave this book four star read. I think I didn't give it five stars because it was about 100 pages too long. It follows two best friends, Maya, who is Muslim, and Jamie, who is Jewish. It is very interesting to see the cultural dynamics and how they blend together. It's following a, um, they basically, as you can see from the cover, they do political canvassing for the person running for their area and and basically it becomes really dear to Maya's heart because there is a law that they're trying to pass I think where women are banned from wearing hijabs I think that was what it was um, but it was just very interesting I really enjoyed the culture 
that they added into this book. Um, it really added to the love story of the two of them, but also the friendship and just the overall plot of the book. But there were scenes that were really dragged out, like the canvassing parts. There were quite a few of them, so you sort of knew what was happening. And I think if you're going to they go door-to-door -door canvassing, you really want it to be something different or something interesting that happens. You don't really want the same repetitive routine. Then I read The Last Anniversary by Leanne Moriarty. I, this is the second book I read of hers. I gave this a full star read. Again, it was probably 100 pages too long, but I really did enjoy reading it. Um, it follows Sophie, who had dated a man called Thomas. His family lives on Scribblegum Island. Basically, there's a Monroe baby mystery. A child was left there when they were younger. Aunt Connie now does tours, and they were discovered by Aunt Connie and another aunt, which I can't remember the name of. But yeah, and it just follows the life on the island. Sophie moves to the island, even though she's not with Thomas anymore. And it just follows a lot of different character storylines. And it was just a really good read. I think it was relatable family-wise because there was so much drama that there was something you could relate to in some sense. Then I read Daisy Jones and the Six, five-star read. Um, this is probably my least favourite out of the three of them I read, but when I say least favourite, it's still a great book to read. It's in a interview script form and it just felt like you're watching a documentary. So good, so easy to read. If you're looking, if you're not a book lover, but you do like reading a book here and there, this is the book for you. It's so easy to follow. There's not too many words on pages. It's just perfect. It follows a girl and how she becomes part of a band called The Six. Yeah, their journey together as a band, um, plus the individual journeys of the band members. This is probably one of my favourite books of the year. It was it's end with us it ends with us by Colleen Hoover. It's a five star read, hundred percent, hands down, you need to read. If you haven't and you are the one of the few that haven't read, who are you? What are you doing? This you must read. Incredible follows Lily and her relationship with a guy called Ryle. It goes back to her past, which Atlas is a part of, and her present, which Ryle's a part of. The way this writes, you feel as though you're making the decisions and questioning things with Lily as she is doing the same. And it was just very, very well written. There was The Six of Crows. I gave this book a four star read. It was about a thousand pages too long. Not my favourite book of the year. I gave it four stars because I did enjoy parts of it, I did enjoy the characters just overall was very slow for me and not enough for me to want to pick up the second book of it. Then I read The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. I gave this a four star read. It, it was definitely not as good as her flat share. It was very boring and very anticlimactic. Having set a storyline on a road trip quite literally you could do so much with it but she kept it really simple and I just yeah I did not in the end like it as much as I thought I would which was really disappointing because I was obsessed with her flat chair book. When I read The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, loved it. Five star, 100%. Loved it, loved it, loved it. One of my other favourite books of the year. It follows the Maid of Honour and the Best Man. The Maid of Honour is the sister of the bride, the best man is the best friend to the groom. Those are the only two people that do not get food poisoning when they have the buffet at the wedding. So they end up taking the bride and groom's honeymoon because the honeymoon is unrefundable as it was won by Olive's sister who is a big fan of contest. So yeah, it just follows that and it's just one of the best enemies to lovers books I've read. It was just funny and very well done. I read the guest list by Lucy Foley. I gave this book a five stars. It was a really good murder mystery, very relaxed in term in like relation to thirteen, but it was still such a good read. She's got a new one coming out. I think it's called like the Paris Apartment, so I'm very excited for that. But yeah, I did not guess the murderer. That's for sure. Yeah, the, the plot really twisted when you found out the murderer and their connection to the person murdered. It was just very well done. Then we have read The Beach Read by Emily Henry. I gave this book a four star read. It was really well done. It really touched on trauma very well. Um, having some Coming from someone who has had trauma in their life from losing a parent, it was very well written, very relatable. Um, and the relationship between the two characters I really enjoyed. I thought it was funny and yeah, it just wasn't anything spectacular in my mind but I would still recommend reading because it is just a nice little summer read. And I read The Hating Cane by Sally Thorne. I gave this book a four stars. I really enjoyed The Enemy to Lover. I thought it was very slow, very painstaking and slow, like that annoyed me but 
that's why I probably didn't get five stars but at the end of the day it's probably what had to be done and I just thought it was very well done it was very funny and very entertaining it follows Lucy and Joshua who are assistants to the CEOs of a company that's merged together and it follows their job and their competition with their job a job that's on offer then also their own relationship and family drama and yeah it's got everything rolled into one but also a really good enemies to lovers book and we went malibu rising which is five stars and it was by taylor jones reed again i was very surprised i didn't think i'd like it as much as i did the ending i really enjoyed i think it was the sorry it's very hot i live in australia if you can't tell it's boiling so if you can hear the cicadas in the background, I'm very sorry. I read this book um, and I was very surprised by it. I loved the ending. I think it was very tied, well tied together. Definitely different from Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Sick, but set in the same world as them. It was just, yeah, it was very well done and I really enjoyed it. And it was also relatable to me because the father in it is not very present in these kids' lives. It follows two brothers and two sisters so four and yeah also the main character nina is very relatable because she was the oldest and she had to look after her siblings which is something i had to do obviously not as long and as hard as she had to but it was still relatable in some circumstances and so was the father i would recommend reading if you get the chance taylor jenkins read is a really good author and so is colleen hoover to get into reading if you really want to um but i would recommend taylor jenkins read if you're looking for something that's not going to make you cry. Now, moving on to the last two books I read for 2021. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Five star read. Follows Tate and Miles' journey together. Um, Miles has a massive secret and you don't find out what it is until about midway through the book, I think, or towards the end. I was shocked. I don't cry in books. I cried with this book. It was insane and there's not much more I can say about it. You just need to read it. And the final book I read for the year was The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I gave this book a five star read. I thought it was so good. Just a different love story, I think, from what I am used to for Enemies to Lovers. I think it was so cool that it was based on something like The Social Experiment. It's a dating website, but it's for people you get actually tested. And the guy that owns it, River, he matches with one of the participants, Jess. And so it's very interesting to see that storyline. I really loved the single mother storyline for Jess and how River became a part of that, how they made that work. Um, it's not anything crazy, but it was just very short and sweet. Just really nice to read. My final book for 2021. And overall, I had a very good reading year. I had a lot of five star reads, obviously some terrible reads, but I'm very excited to see what 2022 has to offer. I am currently propping you on a stack of books that I'm meant to be reading this year and I've got so many you want to read. So many series that I haven't read yet and I really would love to read them finally even if it's like 20 years too late but that's okay. But um, yeah I hope you all enjoyed this video. I really wanted to share with you guys what I've read this year. I think it'd be fun to look back on especially when I do my 2022 one. Yeah I hope you all enjoy your reading year. I hope there were some recommendations here that you can add to your list for 2022 and I will see you all in my next video very soon. Goodbye.